Hi folks, I'm John Whidden and this is my friend Steve McLeod. We're coming to you from Halifax, Nova Scotia and welcome to this Sonic Obsession. Tonight we're going to do part three of our look at the Beatles documentary put together by uh, film director Peter Jackson, uh, Get Back, because it is part three of the documentary airing tonight. So we're going to give you our thoughts on part three, but we're also going to give you a kind of a, a roundup of what we thought of the, uh, of the whole documentary, all three parts. Really looking forward to the one tonight though, looking forward to more um, things happening at Apple Studios. They have moved to Apple Studios and of course really looking forward to the, uh, the concert on the rooftop, which I think is probably how the show will end you, or how the documentary will end. You would think. I would think. But don't spoil it for them. I don't know. I'm just guessing. <clears throat> I'm just guessing. And that's kind of been a lot of fun when it comes to this uh, documentary. Yeah, so we will um, watch the show, it, the episode. It is two hours and 18 minutes long. Something like that. Yeah. The shortest of the three. And we will see you on the other side. Hi folks, we just finished watching part three of the three-part documentary, Get Back, about the Beatles. I thought it was the best uh, episode of the three-part series. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It, was, it was just full of life. It was, uh, things were coming together in, at Apple Studios. Then, of course, there was the uh, tremendous concert on the top of uh, Apple Records on Seville Row. Uh, there was the interaction with the people on the street. I mean, not so much, with, not the Beatles, of course, but with the uh, the film crew. There was the police going into. Yeah, the, they, had, they had ten cameras, didn't they say? Ten, ten cameras set up uh, everywhere on buildings across the street, on the roof, on the street, talking to people, and uh, yeah, it was it was just tremendous. Uh, yeah, it was incredible. I I wish I'd been there, but obviously I wasn't. But I just found that the show itself, though. Um, the first two episodes were kind of leading up to this because you could see, I think we used chaos a couple of times describing uh, Twickenham Studio and then it got, it got better when it got to um, Apple Studios or Apple Records. And But tonight was, I don't know, they just, they were gelling. Uh, well, it it all you, coming together. It makes you wonder why they stopped performing because, you know, this was the tightest... Uh, performances that we saw throughout the oh yeah the three episodes yeah. and they were having so much fun yeah and they were clearly in, and especially John was yeah really, John Lennon was incredible he was yeah and it makes you wonder why well we know why they didn't go on tour but uh, it's a, it's a shame uh, it was it was a great thing that they finally had the opportunity to play again together in a somewhat live setting I guess yeah. well John Lennon was just in his element you could tell he was just having a blast I mean. Yeah. I think John would have liked it because they were up on the roof. They shouldn't have been up on the roof. They but it were... was something different that he would, would that would have appealed to him. Right. right. I mean, he was a nonconformist. He would have loved it, and he was just in his element. He was just having a blast. Um, Paul, of course, was having a blast as well. George was kind of off to the side, and Ringo seemed to be enjoying himself as well. But I mean, the music was incredible. Uh, the people on the street were loving it. Uh, people of no, color, not, not everyone. There well, a, there was a, there there was was a couple just... of characters who looked like they were uh, Michael Palin <laughs> and Drag from Monty Python. From Monty Python, Python. Who were you know kind of <laughs> yeah, they were a little negative about it. But overall, I mean, there were a few older people who were uh, who were quite complimentary and who uh, seemed to really enjoy the music. But even the work that they were doing in the studio, all of the material that they had started doing in Twickenham. And then, of course, when early days at uh, Apple Records, it was all coming together. I don't know if that's how they worked or not when they were recording. I mean, all those other albums they did before that. But it's it, it was you know that was the amazing thing to me because you have these incredible EMI Abbey Road recordings and with uh, George Martin there, and you always had in in your mind's eye it was very regimented and yeah. very. But this was like uh, a it mess. Chaos. It was, it was a it was a mess. Yeah. Even at uh, you know at, at the um, Apple Record Studio, at uh, you know cables and wires and people, kids. Oh yeah, there was a uh, little uh, Heather Linda, McCarthy. Linda, Mac or, yeah, Linda Eastman's daughter. Yeah, uh, who Heather, who couldn't have been more than five or six, and, and, and you she, know, talking about cats and John Lennon teasing her about cats and that kind of thing. It was cute. It was. It, yeah. I mean. 
they were a family. I mean, they really were, a, you know, a big family, but they were coming together in the studio, and it was just a real treat to watch all of the material that they'd started off uh, at Twickenham finally coming together. Well, it's, now, it saved the series for me. Oh, me too, yeah. I mean, I, I was... I, I really didn't enjoy much of the uh, the first episode, except for the bit about the Abbey Road moment or the mm. uh, Let It Be moment, where Paul was playing in the background, and there were a few really uh, captivating moments. But I just found the the mayhem of Twickenham to be just really distracting and kind of depressing, and uh, and made me feel like like you know I, well, I can understand now why I don't really care for the Let It Be album all that. You know, well, because, see, I we disagree on yeah. that one. I like the album because it, and I really enjoyed watching it all come together. I mean, that that to me was the incredible thing. But the, I'm going to step out on a limb and say, the previous albums they probably had a lot of work done before they went into the studio, and then when they were in the studio, they had George Martin guiding. Well, them. this is the thing, and then this is the the real takeaway from from this uh, final episode was. Martin was back. Yeah, yeah. And he was a very calming presence, and you could see him suggesting things that really made a difference again in their cohesion. I mean, at one point, Lennon is listening to George Martin, and he, you know, he's listening to him. Yeah, you know, yeah. whereas before he was sort of dismissing his production and all this stuff. You know, he did, he said a lot of silly things in his in his life, Lennon, and I think that oh, was, yeah, I think that was things. I think yeah. that was one of them about you know dissing George Martin at this point and all that. But it really brought it, brought it all together. It ended on such a high point uh, during these three episodes that, with the co concert and just how everybody was um, exultant after yeah. it, you know? Well, I think it also showed that the Beatles were just like so, uh, such a big part of the fabric of England at the time. Yeah. I mean, almost everybody knew that it was the Beatles that was well, that they, were performing on the roof. The world. You know? The world, world. I mean, yeah. We all, we all knew who they yeah. were. I mean, they were the biggest thing in the world. And uh, But they would ask people who was performing, and they most people, it was the Beatles. I mean, okay. they knew. And even though these songs had not been performed before. So well, and they couldn't, and they couldn't see them. You know, they right. They couldn't actually see the performers yeah. on, on the roof. But uh, There was one interesting thing in the third part. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I, think, was, I think I know what you're going to say. John Lennon going to meet uh, yeah, Alan, Alan Klein. Oh, no, the, 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 the group going to meet Alan Klein, because Lennon had met him before, I think, for dinner. Yeah. And and it, it, Lennon, it, yeah, it really put an ominous feel to the whole episode. Yes, it did. And I kind of wish they had explored that more, but anyway, they didn't. And uh, Lennon's comment was uh, about Klein, he's fantastic. Uh, Ringo was uh, not quite so enthusiastic, referring to him as a con man, uh, or that he'd heard he was a con man, Klein, I mean. So anyway, I think... Well, the other thing about that was that, one, that they showed McCartney... And McCartney was sitting there, and he kind of lifted his eyebrows, yeah. like, mm, you yeah. know. And that ended up being the really divisive thing that kind of, I guess, I think. Well, that's together. what I've always read for years is that it was the it was the relationship that the other three formed with Alan with Klein, and Paul didn't want anything. And Paul to do. didn't want anything to do it, so that's why yeah. Paul just took off. So that was a that was a really nice inclusion in this because it just it was a it wasn't more than a minute or so in, yeah. in the yeah. film, but sort of the storm cloud was hanging over. Yeah, over it. You knew that was kind of a foretelling of what was to come. Yeah, and then it got back into something very positive again with them in the studio and then up on the roof. I thought that was a tremendous performance. They did some of the numbers twice, but yeah. it was just incredible. I mean, well, it just it made you, reminded you of what a great live band they were. Well, and yeah. how, many, how many hours and years they played together in live settings and when. The chips were down; they could still deliver it. Yeah, and the they did it. big time. So, what was your what were your takeaways from the whole series? Well, I think the the thing that really struck home to me was the fact that um, the, the creative process. Uh, I mean, uh, as I said, I, I I have a feeling that most of the albums that they did before that they had a very good idea of what they were doing, song wise, production wise, that kind of thing before they went into the studio. Right. This was kind of just thrown together. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to do something very basic and kind of start from scratch. And they sure did. And they sure did. <laughs> and I'm wondering, I'm, I'm you know, watching the first episode and then into the second episode, I'm thinking to myself, well, how are they gonna pull this off? Like really, how are they gonna pull it off? But because they were just so good and so talented and so creative, 
and willing to listen to each other as the show went on and as the, the time period went on, they were able to bring it together. Yeah, I mean, I know Let It Be is not one of the great Beatle albums. I think it's a very good album. And I have a lot, actually, I have a lot more respect for Let It Be now, now that I know of everything that was going on well, in do, the background. Do, and you mentioned that, I yeah. Do, I do too. I mean, after seeing what the what a mess it was at the yeah. beginning and uh, how they were able to even pull that out um, just amazes me. But, you know, it, Peter Jackson did a wonderful job. You know, I, I, I was wondering coming here today what I would say about the whole series. And I was going to say, well, he's done the definitive history of that period of the Beatles mm -hmm. history. Um, but was it great entertainment? And I wasn't sure because I found a lot of it tedious. It was tedious in time, sure. But that last episode salvaged it for me. Would I, you know, it, is it great entertainment in the sense that you would go back to it and watch it, you know, time and time again? No way. It's, I'll probably watch it again. It's, it's, you know, I'll take a break. Yeah, it's, um, it is a marathon. Yeah, but and, I, but I think, I think it really gives us a good picture of, of the creative process that the Beatles went through. Um, and it also, I think, uh, gives us an idea that, okay, here were, here were these four guys, and they wanted to do it on their own. They wanted to just go into, a, well, Twickenham and then Apple Records, or Apple, Apple Records, the studio they built downstairs, and do it themselves. And I really admire them for that. And to me, it's, it's, to me, it was just another glimpse of why they are the greatest rock and roll band ever. I mean, they, they, they kind of broke all the rules, you know, and... With this, they just broke another rule. And then they went up and played on the rooftop, and they're not supposed to. They broke another rule. But I am really happy that Jackson got a hold of all of this footage. Yeah. And it was not allowed to sit in a vault somewhere and basically probably just deteriorate over years because it probably would have if somebody didn't get a hold of it and, and rescue it and put it together. So I think that's also a big plus, is that we've got a glimpse of these guys over... A very important month, actually, in the history of the Beatles, and uh, we, we owe a debt really to Peter Jackson and all of the other production crew for putting it all together. Because it would have been a shame for future generations not to have seen, well, for this generation and other generations not to have seen the full story. So, yeah, and my last thought on this is, as I'm glad he he did do this because it really kind of rejuvenated that period for the Beatles. A lot of people. Um, thought that this was just a, a terribly contentious time, and it was to a certain degree. Yeah. But the, the takeaway from this was how much these guys loved each other, or at least liked each other. Yeah, I think they loved each other. And, I really do. And, you know, when you think about it, shortly after this, the wheels began to really fall yeah. off. You know, they did... They, they did get together. They, could, they couldn't finish this album the way to their satisfaction. They didn't like the film. They decided to have one crack at the one last crack at the can with Abbey Road, and then the their disagreements just increased until they were gone. Yeah, know, uh, a year later. Yeah, exactly. So it was nice. This is this is a really nice uh, final statement about the Beatles, in in, uh, in a way, and uh, just makes me realize why I love them so much. Yeah, know? well, that's the same with me. I mean, they were way back when my favorite band is why I got into rock and roll or started listening to rock and roll and they're still my favorite band. Um, so that's it. I mean, I, I just think that, I think that the whole show was just, was incredible and it was just a real treat to see it and to see them go through this whole process.